In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create the rectangle class and also how to create the driver program or the application that is going to use the rectangle class. So we start by creating a new class, rectangle. And what we do is that um, I'm going to keep it simple, so I'm going to remove any of these comments for now. And once you decide the name of the, the class that you're going to create, the first thing you want to think about is what are the fields or the attributes that I'm going to keep uh, track of, right? So the attributes sometimes are called fields, and sometimes we refer to it as data. And what we want to do here is that we want to keep for the rectangle class, as we described, we want to maintain the uh, two attributes, the length and width. And also we want to um, define for each of these fields, what is the access modifier, who can access it, and also what is the data type to be used. Now notice here that in general, you are trying to keep your fields private. That's, that's like 99% of the cases or even 100%. You want to keep your data uh, private and that's why the access modifier is by default is private very rare occasions you will you will need to do uh, or to keep one of these fields public or so so private and I'm going to keep it double to allow for a floating point and I will call the first one length and then private double width so here this tells uh, Java as you define the rectangle class that I'm going to keep two fields and they usually uh, come first in the description of a rectangle class or, or, or the class in general the fields come first following the fields you start to define your own methods all right so we define our methods so we said okay so for them for the two fields what I want to do is to define getters and setters right so for example here I'm going to set the length field so in this case I say since the field is private the length is private what I want to do is to make the method that will deal with the length to be public so people if you are not going to give people the access to the length directly and I will show you how or what, what we mean by that then you at least want to give them access to a method that will allow them to interact with length now, do you have to? You don't have to. That's that's completely up to you. If the design requires this, do it. Now, since we are still learning how to write a class, we are going to give full access for length and width and full access to get them and set them. So in this case, let's, let's define a method that will set the length of that class. So in this case, it's going to be public. And since it sets Right, so this means I'm going to give this mess. Uh, I'm going to give this method something that it will take and go set the length to it. So this means I'm not expecting any output from this method. It's not going to return anything. I'm not. I'm not waiting for anything from this method. So in this case, the return type is going to be void. It's not returning anything, and not anything is void in terms of data types. And I'm going to call it set length and this is a common um, common programming practice people when you define setters and getters they usually set define them as set the field name or get the field name so in this case set length and since it's a method that has two uh, words then the second word is capitalized so set length and what you want to give this method is another double uh, variable right or a parameter in this case that it sets the length to so in this case I'm going to call it new length I could call it anything else I could call it len I could call it L right so that's that's completely up to you so here this is the method with the with the curly braces and then inside the method what it what it's going to do is it's very simple it's going to go to the length field the attribute of my class and it's going to set it to the new length. All right, so that's that's very straightforward and, and very simple. All right, so the same thing can be repeated for the set width. So I can do public void returning nothing. It sets the width and it's going to take an input, which is double new width, for example, and then the curly braces for that method. 
and what we do here is that we say set the width field to be new width so what we are saying is that take this new width and set that width to it so width is equal to new width notice here that all of these methods they have direct access to the length and width so within the class within the curly braces of the class methods they have access to the fields they can access them all right without any special syntax or, or anything if if it says length is equal to that it just sets that to uh, the new length all right so two more methods the getters how to get so from outside i could set the length by giving you a value and you go set the field to it or also i can ask you to retrieve the the, the data for me so i would i could come and ask you what is the length right so get the length for me um, so in this case we say public and since you are getting the length to the external uh, entity the user a class or something so in this case we are expecting something from this method it's going to return something and what it's going to return is the length for example and the length was declared to be double so in this case the return type is going to be double and I'm going to call it get length and I'm not going to give anything to it because when I say get length it's going to know that I need to get the length and I don't need to provide anything right because this method is closer to, le to the length than me so I don't have to give it anything to access the length and retrieve it right so it has direct access to it so in this case all it does is that it return it returns by using the return keyword the field length or the attribute length all right so that uh, that's how to return this then I can repeat the same process to public double get width and it takes no input or parameters and what it does is just return width all right notice here that I want to show you something also as you program um, if you if you have something that is not indented uh, what you could do is that you could auto format by saying edit and here you can uh, say auto layout all right or you could uh, hit the control shift i if you click it it's going to indent this automatically for you so it's going to make that nice layout uh, which matches our um, check style and uh, the programming style that we talked about before all right so that's a class that's a full class that can be used However, at this point, it's completely useless unless you use it, right? So you want to use this class. So I have rectangle. That's good. It describes what a rectangle is. But now I need to use this. So I'm going to create a rectangle demo. All right, another class. But this class is going to be a program. It's going to be an application um, or a driver program, right? So if I open it here, I'm going again to remove all of these comments. All right. And inside this method, um, inside this, excuse me, uh, this class, I'm going to define a main or the main method, which makes this an application. So here, public, static, void, main, string, args. Now, by the way, um, something that you need to, to connect with what we just learned is that the main method is just a method, right? It's returning void. It's public, right? It has a new keyword here called static. We will explain that later. But the essence of this is, is a method. It's public. It returns nothing. It's called main. And it takes that argument somehow, which we will describe later in this course. So that's that's we are starting to 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 um, to understand what's what's going on here, right? So it makes a little bit more sense um, every day. All right. So inside this, what I want to do, like if you remember, we used to say, like for example, string is um, my name is equal to a new string, and then I call it something, right? So I could say CS fourteen forty. So that's creating a string, right? Now, the same thing, if you want to use a rectangle that you just declared or you just defined as a class, you will use the same thing. You will say rectangle, 
I'm going to call it box is equal to or reference it by box is equal to new rectangle. All right. And in this case, I'm just going to create it as an empty one. All right. Now, a couple of things that you need to, to understand here. Um, this is going to create the rectangle class in the heap memory. Now, notice here that since you started to reference, you created and instantiated a rectangle out of the rectangle class, you will notice that BlueJ automatically connects these two classes, right? And, and the way you read this is that this class here or program is using this class. And we know that's, that's true because we just created or instantiated an object or a rectangle object from the rectangle class, as we can see here. All right, and it's referenced by box. Now notice here that once you do this, even though we didn't set the length or width, they are by default set to zero. So here, system.out.println. All right, and let's say for example here, um, length, and I'm going to um, print get or box dot get length. All right. Now notice here that because box references an object or a rectangle object that was created from this class rectangle, it has two fields and it has four methods. So if I say box .get length, it's going to call or run the get length method that is owned by the ref the object referenced by box. So box .get length. All right. So if I print or run something like this, it's going to print zeros right and it's a double okay so that's that's good that makes sense um, I could do the same thing with let's say get width right so box dot get width All right and here I'm going to call it width compile run there we go so the length and width are set to zero once I created an instance of that object, of that class in, in, in my program. All right, so once I do this, what I could do is, um, like let's go and set the length and width to other values, non-zero values, all right? Now, if you remember when I was explaining, I said by setting them to be private, no one from outside can access the length and width directly. And what I meant by that is that I couldn't go and say, for example, uh, box dot length is set to 10. All right. If I try to run this, see what is the error that we get? Length has private access in rectangle. This means you cannot access it from here. All right. It doesn't tell you that the syntax is, is wrong. The syntax is not actually wrong. However, it tells you that the length field is set to be private, so you cannot do something like this. You cannot go and just say anywhere in your code, box.length is equal to 10, right? If you are allowed to do this, find the method that, that lets you set the length to 10, all right? So for example here, if I go to rectangle and set the length to be public in this case, all right? So public, compile. And then let's try to print the length and width again here. All right. Now compile, it's going to compile, no complaints. So now this is valid. This is because length was set to public. You can access it directly and go in and set the value to be 10. So let's run this. There we go. The length now is set to 10. However, this is not good. Do not do that. All right. You want this to be private. And if you are allowed to um, to set the length to a value, find the method that lets you do that. That's it. All right. Uh, so in this case, since this is not going to work, I have to go and use the proper method, which is going to be set length to 10. Now, if I compile now, it works. All right. And or let's do it 100 to see the difference. Compile, run, and we get 100. All right, I could do the same thing with width. I could go and say, set the width here to 
to be um, 1000. Compile, auto layout, compile, run, and we get 100 and 1000 in the length and width, just like what we did here. All right, so this is how you how you declare, how you define a rectangle class and how to use it in a, in a program by creating an instance of it in the memory and then interact with it. Use the get length, get width, set the length, set the width. All right, um, you could also do something like this. I could say, for example, double. Um, and notice here, by the way, this is something I, I just noticed. Um, the 100 and 1000, they are integer literals. However, since set length and set width are expecting doubles, what would happen is that they will be upgraded. And that's why when we say get length and get width, it's actually printing it with a decimal um, point, so with a floating point. All right. Another thing is that uh, you, you could also, um, instead of putting just an, an, a literal here, you could say, for example, double... Um, num is equal to 100 and then you could pass num as an argument as a parameter here right and it would work all right and of course get get length and get width they work this way also you can you can use them separately in the print line statement print f statement print statement you could combine them with other um, with other string literals that's completely up to you all right so that's the rectangle class and how to use it uh, what we will do next is that we will try to get a better or a more uh, complex exercise right or how to create a different class from scratch so this way we can practice creating classes